evening and welcome once again to Meet the Leaders. I'm your host, Terrence Micus. New York State Senator Steve Salan has been in Albany for over 25 years and presently sits as the chairman of the state's committee on education. His challenger, Brian Keeler, says 25 years is too long and he wants to affect change for the better. Tonight, they'll debate the issues surrounding the 41st Senate District. That's next on Meet the Leaders. Thank you both for being here. Mr. Keeler, you say 25 years is too long. You think it's time for a change. You know Steve Salan's record. Many people say he's done a lot of things for the district. Why is it time for a change? What do you want to do to change? I, like many other people in this particular district, are really concerned about the direction in which the state and the country are headed. And when we look at our government in Albany, we see that it is as the Brennan Center said, probably the most dysfunctional in the country, and that there's not a person who's paying attention in New York who doesn't understand that we need to have real reform in how we do our government to make it more democratic and open to the people. And the people who've been there for two decades, I don't believe are motivated to make the kind of changes that the people of the state of New York, New York, New York want. What's one of the big changes that you think Senator Salan specifically has not made that you think needs to get done for the p voters in the 41st Senate district? We need to have clear and open and honest election reform here in the state of New York. What does that mean? Well, in, in terms of myself and in terms of Elliot Spitzer, we're both backers of clean money, clean election, paper ballot, optical scan voting machines. And the reason why that's important, Terrence, is because if the people of New York don't trust the way they cast their vote and they feel that it's, their democracy isn't being served, they first of all lose interest, then they stop participating, and when they stop participating, all sorts of bad things can happen. Clean money? Are you putting that at the feet of Mr. Salam that he's taking dirty money? And what does he have to do with the voting issues that the state hasn't complied? Clean money, clean election elections is actually a phrase of a particular uh, approach for uh, our election reform. And if you go to citizen action, you'll see exactly what it means. But is, is Senator Salan, in your opinion, taking money that is unclean? That's what I want to know. Right now, the way the process is set, every single legislator in Albany is collecting money from special interests and also from lobbyists. And what Clean Money, Clean Election does is take our election process and our money out of the hands of big money and put it in the people of New York. And you would never do that even to get reelected? Uh, I will ironically, one of the first things I'm going to do is push for legislation in, in Albany to make it easier to replace me, to make our election process more fair, because I think that serves everyone in the state of New York. Senator Salane, he says it's time for change. You have a record. Address some of the issues that he's talked about. Oh, uh, certainly I do have a record, and really what this campaign in large part is about is my record. I believe it's a record of success, a record of achievement, uh, whether it's uh, uh, at the level of being a legislator on the floor negotiating and, and passing bills, whether it's delivering here in the district in terms of tens of millions of dollars for a slew of very worthwhile endeavors, whether it be public protection, hospitals, uh, economic development, just to name a few. Um, in terms of, uh, uh, of Open reform, um, back in 2005, there were a number of reform bills uh, that we passed, whether it was public authorities reform, whether uh, it had to do with reordering the way in which the House, both, both houses were doing business. Uh, those well, reforms were applauded at the time. There's now an effort to try and get some additional reforms, and, to, and certainly amenable to looking at additional reforms. What were the specific but, reforms that you felt that you pushed for? Well, we we uh, we did away with the so-called open uh, uh, open seat voting. Uh, we provided the ability to uh, uh, to have. Um, uh, committee meetings that in which there would no longer be proxy voting. We provided the ability to, uh, to limit the number of committees people uh, sat on. We expanded uh, the membership on the minority and on committees. Uh, we did away with uh, some of the practices such as the ability of the majority leader to remove a bill from, from a calendar. Uh, we did a host of things which, as I said at the time, were applauded. But with regard to funding, as long as I've been representing this district or any other district, uh, the lion's share of my money always comes from local people and local business. So you're not beholden to special interests? No, I, I, I'm not quite, you know, if, if you're advocating for something, you're either an advocate or a special interest, depending upon who views what you're doing. So if the Nurses Association uh, wants to uh, uh, support me, either by providing me uh, uh, some type of personal support, or if they want to support me financially, or if the social workers want to do something similarly, uh, law enforcement wants to do that. The system is built on advocacy, and if it's what you want, you're an advocate. And if it's what somebody else wants, it's a special interest. So if you get into office, Mr. Keeler, people are going to want to support you and they're going to give money to your campaign. Do you fall in? Will you fall into that same category? Uh, there's a difference between supporting people and being an advocate and actually giving lots of money. 
to a campaign. And it's, it's, the, it's the appearance of impropriety that we're talking about here. Of course, there are going to be various organizations that support me. There already are. But we haven't taken any PAC money in this particular election. And if we can level the playing field, that's what this is about, Terrence. It's about leveling the playing field so that incumbency doesn't become a right. It doesn't become some form of legitimizing long-term occupancy in office. What, but you know that the Democrats and the Republicans in Albany, when they last did the census and gerrymandered, and that's my term, all these districts, they did it to favor Republicans and Democrats alike. They both were pro part of the problem. You're going to be able to go in there and fight the Democrats in that Let area? me step in right here. I am for nonpartisan, impartial redistricting because I feel that that's the only way that we can continue to have uh, our, our citizens to have faith in the elected process. You 